So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be focusing continuing with transformations with the focus on rotation and showing you how to perform a rotation using tracing paper properly. Now rotation involves moving a shape around a point in a certain direction and by a certain angle. Now when either performing a rotation or describing a rotation it is important that you use and state these three things as failure to do so may cost you marks in an exam. Now in a rotation you need what we call a center of rotation. Now often this is marked with a little asterisk or a little mark or a circle on a grid or even on a blank piece of paper or at a much higher level it's given as a coordinate. You're also given a direction. Now your direction is either going to be clockwise or anti-clockwise. Now usually in a classroom or in the exam hall you will have an analog clock so it's just a case of remembering that clockwise goes in that direction and anti-clockwise goes in that direction. So it's always in the opposite way. And the angle is either going to be 90 degrees, 180 or 270. So when you are given, let's say, clockwise direction, and if I just do a little cross there, that, so we're going in this direction, so that point there is going to be 90, that's going to be 180, and this angle here is going to be 270. And going in a complete circle, zero will also be 360. However, if I went anti-clockwise, and write that down, and I draw my same sort of compass points, apologies for getting a wonky neck, then this here would be 90 degrees, 180 would be there, and 270 would be there. So you can see how the 90 and the 270 are flipped but, and it, so it does depend and that's why they need to give you that information if either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Now one thing you should be able to notice is that if a rotation is 180 degrees then no direction may be stated and the reason for that is because 180 is in the exact same position for both clockwise and anti-clockwise. Now if you're in the sort of frame of mind of making notes then this is definitely something that I would make a note of in your notes. Now when it comes to describing a um, rotation it is really important that you do state what the center of rotation is what the direction is and what an angle is and when you are familiar with performing a rotation then you will kind of get gist of by looking at an image and an object you'll be able to know hopefully with practice and with experience what the rotation angle is going to be now the angle is always at this stage is always going to be 90 180 270 now there was a time in the past where they could give you 45 or 30 degrees in which when I go through some of the translation examples I'll show you how that's changed but for now from all syllabuses the angle will either be 90, only 90 180 or 270 you will not get any other angle that is different to those three now performing a rotation using tracing paper. Now effective use of tracing paper does help you guide to where, your, where you draw uh, your image when given the information of the rotation to perform on the object. Now it is possible to perform a rotation without tracing paper and still get full marks as long as the image is in the correct position and in the correct orientation. Now the correct position is just basically it's in the right spot and the correct orientation just means that it's in the it looks how it should look so you might get marks if your answer is the correct orientation but in the wrong position it's unlikely you'll get marks if your diagram is in the correct position but the wrong orientation all depends on the mark scheme now if you, you uh, do not lose or gain marks for using tracing paper but it does definitely make it a lot easier to use and even though it is a little bit more time consuming so what I'm going to go through in terms of some of these examples, now I probably won't go through every single one of these questions because it will just make the video incredibly long and incredibly boring and you might want to use this video uh, falling asleep. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that you can download this worksheet from the description below and you can work with me and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can use tracing paper to answer questions like this. Now with each of these questions, the shapes and in terms of what makes a question difficult is where the centre of uh, rotation is so that's descriptive by this little red little star and then we've got the object which is the blue shape now depending on where the uh, center of rotation is and how far away it is from the object will determine how many marks or what level a question is and you can see that as we go down this worksheet 
the center of rotation tends to escape uh, where well, it doesn't actually well there it does it does it later on in the air it escapes the shape of not being on it. it doesn't have to be on it it could be away from it but also the shapes also become a little bit more complex so from a basic shape of let's say a rectangle we then move on to a triangle we then move on to an L shape then we move on to something that looks like a picket or a, a church you could say or a fancy house uh, with a garage and then it moves on to arrowheads hexagons and again a bit more of a uh, L shape then what we'll do is we'll move on to how those types of questions are marginally different to ones where you've got to plot the center enlargement given as it's a coordinate and again it's virtually the same it's just got to do one little thing of plotting that coordinate and then it's just repeat so what I'll do is I'll show and I'll also what I'm going to do now before we get started on these examples I'm going to show you how to use tracing paper correctly in maths now looking at this first question let's have a look at what we've got to do on this worksheet so the first question says that we need to rotate this blue rectangle um, 90 degrees Let's just highlight 90 degrees and we're also doing it clockwise as well and we've got our center of rotation marked as a red little star now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how you can use tracing paper to do this effectively now for this you are definitely going to need a sharp pencil and so and the two words are really important you can't do this you can't use tracing paper without using a pencil uh, and you're also going to mess it all up if you don't have a sharp pencil as well. So it's worth, definitely worth getting that. Now, just before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this question away and just work on a blank surface. Now, when you are using tracing paper, make sure that you have got some rough paper to be performing what we're going to do on tracing paper. And the reason for that is because you don't want to get told off making any marking or being any messy or damaging any sort of either school or home property um, as this can be destructive. Well, it's not that destructive. You just need a rubber at hand and uh, some time away from an adult that will see that you've graffitied or damaged a piece of property. So with this tracing paper, and I've got like a blank sheet of paper, which is not a problem. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by writing neat on one of the corners of the tracing paper. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the tracing paper and then have a scribble side. Now this is not essential, this is not official maths technique or using a tracing paper. It's just so that we know which side is one side and one. So you could call it A and B, you could have called it side one and two. But I'm just going to call it what it actually is. I'm going to have a neat side and I'm going to have a scribble side which will be explained later. Now with the neat side what we then need to do is we need to draw over your objects and include the center of rotation so from this what I'm going to do is I'm accurately now you can use a ruler for this but it's really important you do not move your tracing paper when you are tracing the object so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to be as try and be as accurate as possible and again the bigger the shape the more awkward this is going to be but you should be thankful that in an exam the shape should be relatively quite small and once you've drawn that shape, so for example, if I just move this question paper, you can see I've drawn that rectangle. What I'm then going to do is, and the next important thing, is to make sure that you mark the center of rotation, which is here. A little circle here. And another bit of recommendation that I'll put is to put an arrow going up from the center of rotation, going upwards, so you can see where zero degrees is going to be. So if I just now remove the question paper, it should be quite evident what you can see there now if the center of rotation was somewhere else I would still draw that vertical line with an arrow going up just to tell me where north is going to be or where zero degrees is going to be now this is where the mildly fun bit kind of starts so what we're now going to do is we're going to flip the tracing paper onto our scribble side in which you should be able to see the behind the scenes version of what you've just drawn now technically you don't need to scribble you can just basically go over the shape which is what we're wanting to do and this is again I'm going to show you why you really need some rough paper at the back of this because something will happen so what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to press now if you are going to go over the shape make sure you do press on hard but try not to ruin the tracing paper because obviously that is going to have uh, some damaging effect and mean that you're going to have to do this again so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently just scribble over the edges of the object Again, what I mean by the object is just the original shape. 
And you want to make sure you do cover, but you don't want to go crazy with your scribbling. But you do want to make sure that you are pressing slightly hard doing that. And again, I'm just going to make a note of where my center rotation is. Now, you don't need to worry about the arrow. You don't need to go over that. That's that's just as long as you've gone through over the outline of the object, then that's going to be absolutely fine. Now, if you've done this correctly and you now remove your tracing paper, you should see a very faint outline of your object. And this is one of the reasons why you don't do this in your exercise or on a neat platform or on a table, because that would be printed on your table. So always good to do your scribbling on over a scrap piece of paper. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the question back and I'm going to match up my tracing paper to the object or the work, the actual question. Now what I'm now going to do is I'm going to put my pencil on the center of rotation. Now I want to move it 90 degrees clockwise. So 90 degrees clockwise, if I just do a little sketch, so that's zero, that's 90, that's 180 and that's 270. So where I want this arrow to be pointing is pointing in, oh, I've done, it's come up right on there, so you can see what I've done there. So where I want my arrow pointing is in this direction. I want it pointing like that. Okay, so that's 90 degrees clockwise. So what I'm going to do is then just go back to what I was doing. So match it up perfectly as possible as you can. I'm going to put my pencil on the center of rotation and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the tracing paper until that arrow is pointing exactly to the right which it is there now what I'm now going to do is I'm accurately going to go over the outline of my shape remembering that you are on the neat side of your tracing paper and you go over it and when you remove your tracing paper, you should see a very, very faint outline of your actual shape. And that there is more of a marker. Now, you might find that your sort of tracing is slightly off some of the squares, where really they do need to be on point in terms of in between. So I can see that the nearest corner is that point there. The nearest corner for this one is going to be there, there, and one point is on the center of rotation. Now one thing that's worth checking is that with rotations the size of the shape does not change. All you've done is you're changing the orientation of the shape. So in the object it is a 3 by 8 rectangle and in what I've traced is also a 3 by 8 rectangle. Now the only thing you've got to do now is to trace the shape or to draw accurately with a ruler the final shape. So get ruler which I do not have to hand but I'm going to use a protractor and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the shape again drawing with nice straight lines so the tracing doesn't need to be neat but it's there just to give you now an idea of where your shape needs to go and once you've done your shape it's not necessary but it's worth just highlighting that this here is your image just so that the person who's marking your paper or whoever's looking at the sheet can see, right, okay, this is the object, this is the image, and there we go. So let's repeat the process for question two. So with question two, it's asking us to rotate 90 degrees again, but this time we're going anti-clockwise. Let's go try and use a highlighter that works. Let's go try pink. There we go. So we're right, rotating 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Now, if you remember, anti-clockwise is going this direction so I want my arrow to be facing that direction so again I'm going to use my same tracing paper because that's you, know, you usually get one if you wanted more in an exam just ask for it and they will give it to you so again on my neat side of my tracing paper I'm gonna make sure that the tracing paper doesn't move as I'm going over the outline of the object it's a triangle so it's going to involve a diagonal line and again I'm going to mark my center of rotation and I'm going to draw a little arrow pointing upwards. Then I'm going to get move away from the question, I'm going to get some scrap paper, I'm going to flip the tracing paper over to the scribble side and this is one of the reasons why it's important that having some label on the neat and the scribble because sometimes if you're not scribbling you're just going over the outline it's going to be very difficult to know which side is which when you are imprinting on the question. So again on the scribble side I'm just going to just gently, not gently, to make sure it's imprinted 
going over the edges, highlighting that center. Over the edge, don't, like I say, you don't need to go crazy, you don't need to go and just completely obliterate it because again, you might ruin your tracing paper. And as you can see, if we've done it correctly, it should be imprinted on your scrap piece of paper. So then I'm going to re return back to the question. I'm going to match up the shape. And again, this time I'm going to put my pencil fixed on the center. Now, if you've drawn a big circle like I have where the center thing is now, if your pencil is not in the middle of that or that you've not drawn it accurately, you might find that your shape might be a little bit off the squares, which is why it's important you do use an element of common sense as to where it needs to go. Now, you can see there that my arrow is now pointing to the left uh, at 90 degrees, and that's 90 degrees clockwise. So again, if I just go over, nine, if I'm going 90 clockwise, that's 90 degrees. That's going to be 180 because my arrow is pointing downwards, and this would be 270. Now, 360 would return it back to the original shape. If it was clockwise, then that would be 90 degrees when, when my arrow is pointing to the right. 180 is where it's pointing downwards and 270 would be there. So as it's 180 degrees uh, anti-clockwise, which is the same as 270 clockwise, now I can see that this is the point that I'm after. So I just go over the shape on my neat side, going over. If you've done it correctly, you should find you've got imprint, which you can just about see hopefully on your screens. But that's the point that I want, and this is the other point that I want. Then again, I'm going to go over this shape. Now, depending on how dark your grids are, you may want to use a pen at this stage. Um, I always tend to use, ask my students to encourage them to use colours or the pencil crayons. And again, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shade in that image, and there we go. Now, you will find, as a little bit of a hint and common sense, that if your centre of rotation is actually on the shape, then your two image and your object should be touching. It should be connected. Whether it's by the corner or by on the side, that's true. If your center of rotation is not on the shape of your object, then you will find that your image and your object should not be touching. So definitely something that's worth noting in your common sense part of your brain. Now I'm just gonna jump ahead to question five where we've got 180 degree rotation. So again, it's worth just making a note that here we are rotating 180 degrees. Now it doesn't really matter stating clockwise or anti-clockwise because it's the same. But basically what I want to notice is that at 180 degrees clockwise, my arrow should be pointing downwards. So again, I'm going to use the same bit of tracing paper. And what I'm going to do on my neat side, I'm just going to trace the shape as best that I can. Trying to make extra care that I'm not moving the tracing paper as that will mess the use of it up massively. It's my center and I'm just going to draw a little arrow pointing upwards. Then I move to my screw side and flip that round and then just go over the edges. Again, I'm really rushing this and then returning back to my question like so and then what we'll do is I'm going to put the pencil on the center of rotation and as we're rotating 180s clockwise which is an anti-clockwise let's go clockwise that arrow should be pointing exactly straight down and that's where it should be you can see here that I've not kind of been really accurate in terms of my drawing here but the key points is what you want to notice so it's this point here drawing this line is this point here then it goes to this point here then that point there that point there so all I'm doing is just emphasize the markings of the vertices or the corners and then you can see here now it's very faint only because my scribbling was very faint so these are the effects of not scribbling and um, pressing on to uh, not as hard as it should be so again I, but I can make out where that shape is so again with my straight edge ruler just a straight edge I'm going to go over this shape, be as accurate as possible, like so. Just going to shade in quickly. You don't get any marks for shading, so please do not take forever doing that. And there is our final shape. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to uh, question 7, which is looking at a 270 degree rotation. So again, what I'm going to do is on my neat side, I'm going to trace that shape like so. And I'm going to draw my arrow going up. Now, let's say that you really can't be bothered to risk scribble, which again, many students don't generally want to do. Now, because we are rotating at 270 degrees clockwise, so again, 270 degrees clockwise is pointing in that direction. So it's pointing to the left. Now, with my shape here, again, I'm going to put my pencil on there and I'm going to move this shape so that the arrow is pointing to the left. Now, from this, I can gauge an idea of where my points need to be. So it's basically two squares to the right and then three squares down and go from there. So again, it's a bit tricky because about, you could do it by like moving this and then trying to guess where the points are. It's a very, very fiddly, which is why I encourage correct use of tracing paper will help. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, you don't get any marks for using trace paper. It is possible for you to perform a rotation without tracing paper. Just if you're very good visually, you can see these things and that's going to be absolutely fine. So again, just quickly going over these, that's basically where my shape is going to be. And I'm then going to draw edges with a ruler. So tempted not to. There we go. And yeah, I'm just going to highlight that shape there. Now moving on to the arrowhead for question eight. Again, very complex shape. But again, I'm going to go on my neat version and trace that shape. So, marking the center of rotation and an arrow going upwards. Arrow always goes up. Now, with a 270 degrees anti clockwise, then again, if I draw my little arrow going in the opposite direction, so that's 90, that's 180, 270 is here, so I want my arrow pointing in that direction. Now, for this, I am going to scribble because I don't quite like using the not using it correctly but again shouldn't take you that long and again it's worth putting your hand on the tracing paper so that you are not going to uh, scrumple your tracing paper and then back to the question matching it all up and then again putting your pencil on pressing down and we want that going pointing to the left so that's where it's going to go and what you want to try and do is try and get it so that your Vertices of your tracing are on the sort of corners of these boxes or cross junctions of these of your grid. And they're the points that you want to mark. So and there we go. You can see there because I scribbled quite uh, pressed on quite hard, you can see that you can definitely see where my points are going to be, which is going to be there, there, and there. Now again, with rotation, your shape does not change shape. It doesn't get bigger. The only transformation where the shape changes in size is enlargement. For both translation and reflection, your shape will always stay the same. So, and then I can just shade that there. Yeah. We're all good. Now I'm just going to move on to question nine. And the reason why I'm going to move on to question nine is because unlike all the other previous questions here, our center of rotation is in the middle. So again, I'm just going to make sure I've got enough tracing paper. May have to get another sheet because that shape is pretty big. So let me just get a fresh sheet of tracing paper and let me just label it as N being neat and flipping it over and S being scribble. So again, on the neat side, what I'm going to do now, it's a pretty big shape. So again, just need to be extra careful. So you might find that the more questions of these that you do, your pencil may start to deteriorate. So it may be worth sharpening it again. Again, the bigger the shape, it's really need to just make sure the tracing paper doesn't just crumple. It's very, very tempting. If you want to be super accurate, you can use a ruler at this stage. I'm doing it freehand to save time keep you awake and again my center of rotation and I'm drawing an arrow pointing upwards then let's get to the scribble stage let's get rid of all that <coughs> and let me just go over now again you could if you're accurate you could just simply go over the line so you don't need to scribble 
However, <clears throat> if you do not, on your neat version, go over the line, you might find that there is going to be a blank spot. So again, from this, what we're going to do is match up our diagram and tracing paper. Now again, it's 90 degrees clockwise, so my arrow needs to be pointing to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the sheet. Then you could do it freehand or you could just swivel it around your pencil, but that's basically where it's going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just match up points. Now you can see, I don't know if you can just about see, I think you should be able to, that sometimes you might get something that looks like this, where you can see that that line is slightly off that grid. And it may just be a case of a bit of adjusting, but your final shape should be in the corners of each of the shapes. And the reason for that is because every single vertice of the actual object is nicely in the crossroads of the grid. Neither is like halfway in between a box. So if I just return that, and again, just try and square it up, like so, and that should be okay. But it's these points that you want to focus on. So if I just press on that, that point there, this point here, draw a line that connects it, then this point here, draw a line that connects it, that point there, draw a line that connects it, and finally this point here, and draw a line that connects it. Now you can see that these two points are directly opposite to each other. Those two points are on the same line. Those two points there are along the same lines. So when you are drawing your shape, just make sure that, that is true, because obviously if it's a little bit wayward, you can should be able to spot where you've definitely made a mistake. Now my tracing hasn't come out great for this edge here, so because I already did a thin line and didn't scribble, I missed it completely. Um, so going back to my tracing paper, did I miss it completely? Yeah, if I look zoomed in quite enough, you can see I'm just below the line, which is why no line came up on there, which is why scribbling does really help. And again, you can see here that I'm missing the line from here because it hasn't really come out right. But because I know it's on the same line as that and it matches up to the point here, I can match those points up to get my actual shape. So then what I'm then going to do is finally just get a ruler, straight edge, and these points up. So. And again, when teachers or examiners come to mark your paper, all they have is they just have a tracing paper with where your position needs to be. And as long as it's in the right position and it's the right orientation, you will get full marks. And again, it's just worth just shading that in. Now, although I didn't do every single question on this particular worksheet, um, I will show you what your answers should look like. So if you are working with me or deciding to move on to this worksheet after uh, watch this video, definitely do it and then obviously check your answers with the, uh, the latter part of this video where I'll go through the answers. So let's go through the answers to Rotations 1 worksheet. Now apologies about the shading of this, it's nothing to do with my colouring skills, it's purely to do with the scanning quality of my scanner, but hopefully you should be able to identify where the shapes are and obviously match it up to where you've put yours to know whether it's correct or not. So question 1, 2 is what we did on the video. Uh, previously, question three is there, question four, question five, well you should have the same answer for question five and six because it's just basically 180 degrees clockwise, 180 centre clockwise, just identifying the point that they are both the same thing. And then question seven, question eight, question nine which we did, and finally question ten. Now when you are working at a slightly higher level you may find that a rotation question will involve a, a set of axes. Now the only difference to these questions to the ones we've done previously are the ones where we're not given a centre of rotation and we need to plot that ourselves. Now by doing this extra work means that these questions are going to be worth a lot more marks and simply just marking the centre of rotation in the correct place will get you one out of quite a few marks. So for this particular question, so question one, it says rotate the shape 90 degrees clockwise about its turning point. So turning point, center in rotation is exactly the same thing at the coordinate 10, 8. Now remember when you're plotting coordinates, it's always across first, so the x-axis number goes first, and then it's the y-ordinate. So 10, 8 is going to be 10 across and then 8 up. And so this here is my center of rotation. And now all we need to do is repeat the process of what we did in the, the previous worksheet. So what I'm going to do is on my neat side of my worksheet, uh, of my tracing paper I should say, I'm going to trace the shape as best that I can with a sharp pencil. And then I'm going to mark the center of rotation, which you can clearly see is not touching the actual object. 
So that means that when I draw my image, that also is not going to be touching the actual shape. Now, once I've done this, I can kind of gauge an idea of where the position is going to be. Now, because I'm rotating 90 degrees clockwise, I want my arrow pointing to the right. So what I'm then going to do is just gauge an idea. I'm just going to move this until my arrow is perfectly pointing to the right, which it is there. So that is where my final shape needs to be. So to get some idea of where that is without simply guessing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return back to my scrap piece of paper. I'm going to reverse my tracing paper. And all I'm going to do is just scribble over the triangle. And again, just making sure that you've got both sides. So from this, what I'm then going to do is return the question back, match up my tracing paper on the neat side. And what is important is that if you have gone a little bit crazy with the um, scribbling, it's going to be very difficult for you to match it up and it does need to be matched up exactly. So do be mindful when you are scribbling. I know it may seem like fun, but it can be disastrous when you are trying to use your tracing paper effectively. So again, I'm going to move my tracing paper right into the correct position. This shape isn't the straight, this line isn't the straightest, but I'm just going to try and make it as straight as possible. But like I said, it's the vertices and where they are, which is the most important. And then once I've drawn over my shape, it should imprint, which you can see that it has slightly not the neatest, but I'm guessing the point is there, that point is there, and that point is there. And again, what I'm going to do is using a straight edge or a ruler, just draw those points up. Now, if your neat lines go are not matching your scribbled, your tracing paper lines, then that's not a problem. This is why we go over it to make it look a little bit neater. And again, I'm just going to shade in that shape just to show that, that there is what it's to be. So again, moving on to question two. So again, I'm going to, I've got, I'm this time moving it 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So this time the arrow is going to be pointing to the left and we're rotating it to a turning point of 14, five. So 14 going across and then five squares up, which puts my center of rotation there. Now from this, now I can notice that it's exactly the same triangle, but again, I'm just going to do it again. It shouldn't have done really take that long. I'm just going to go over the shape on my neat side, which I can see I've not done. So let's go over the neat side. So tracing the shape as best that you can. Drawing a little dot and then drawing an arrow pointing upwards and then moving on to your scrap and then just scribbling over the shape not going too crazy you don't need to worry about the center of rotation that doesn't need imprinting match up the shape rotate it so the arrow is pointing there and you can see there that that's where my shape needs to go so it's this point here just using the tracing paper go over to those points so and there it is so the points are there there and looking at this, you can see now this is halfway through that square that way. So is it supposed to be there or is it supposed to be there? Now I know that's the height of the triangle. So I count how many squares are well, one, two, three, four. So that's going to be one, two, three, four. So it's this point here. And then with my straight edge, now for some reason, it might be a case of where your tracing paper triangle might be a little bit smaller, but that's because it sometimes it folds inwards when you are copying and depending on the size of the shape, and make it a little bit more awkward but it's always worth just double checking with the dimensions of the original object i'm just going to just call it like so so moving on to question three so again looking at this we're rotating 180 degrees clockwise so that means that arrow is going to be pointing downwards and with about a turning point of 10 8 again so 10, 8 is here. And you can see how the distance from the uh, object to the center of rotation is quite far. Again, with my tracing paper, I'm just going to draw the shape. Lightly sharpen the pencil, and then make sure you're marking the center of rotation with an arrow pointing upwards. How tall does that arrow need to be? Don't really make a difference as long as it's pointing upwards. And then move into your scrap piece of paper and then 
matching the shape up. Now, if you've got too many shapes, as you can see on this tracer paper, it can be a little bit confusing. So it's no harm in just getting a fresh sheet. We're rotating 180, so that means my arrow needs to be pointing downwards, which there it is. So what I need to do is measure and just mark this shape as best that I can. Uh, moving the tracing paper, it should imprint, and there we go. And I'm going to be a little bit naughty, not use a ruler. Neat enough. Shade the shape in. Like so. And then looking at question four again, we're going for 180 degrees clockwise. If it said anti clockwise, it doesn't really make a difference. But again, what we're going to do is mark our center of rotation. It's 10, 6. So again, that's going to be here. Again, with my tracing paper on the neat side. You always want to make sure with your tracing paper you've got enough space to not only trace the shape but also your center of rotation, which is here, and able to trace. And again, on the scribble side, just quickly scribble the edges. Now, without marking the center of rotation on your tracing paper, it can seem really difficult to match it up, which is why, because I've not scribbled on the arrow, if I use this as my marker, rather than trying to match up the shape, start with the center of rotation with the arrow, and then put the shape in place of where you think it should be. We're going to rotate this 180 degrees. So that's where the arrow is going to be pointing downwards. And just about see where the points need to be. So it's going to here, there, so. Now, when you have drawn your rotation, your image, and it's done correctly as best that you can, try and get an acknowledgement or try and build an understanding of what shapes look like when they've been 90 degrees rotated clockwise and anti-clockwise, 180 degrees and 270 in both directions. Because when it comes to describing a transformation, which seems to be a lot more common now, so you don't actually need to draw tracing paper, because again, it's a lot of faff for teachers to organize and as an additional cost, etc. What they might do is give you a description question where you would have to describe what transformation has taken place here. Now, at the start of the video, you need to make sure that you're nailing the three things. So you need to state where the center of rotation is, and if it's on a grid, you need to make sure it's given as a coordinate. You need to state the angle, and you also need to state the direction. Now, if it is 180, again, do you need to write it? Well, Technically, no, but it is always definitely just to make yourself sure, write down clockwise or anti clockwise doesn't really make a difference because it'll both be the same if it's 180 degrees. So just make sure that when you are describing a transformation, you are nailing those three points. So center of rotation, direction, and an angle. Now, I'm not going to continue with going through these examples, I'll leave that enjoyment for you, but I will show you what your final answers need to look like for all 10 questions. So let's just go over the answers to rotations too. And again, apologies about the scanning quality of the image or the coloring. Um, so here is our answer for question one. So it's always worth just noting where the, if I just zoom in a little bit, hopefully you'll be able to match up the coordinates, which should be in line to what you've done. Question two is there. Question three, question four, question five. Question six, question seven, question eight, question nine, and question 10. And question 11, and question 12. Now, I do need to go back on my words on one thing I did mention about whether the center of rotation, if it's on the shape, then the two shapes should be touching. If it's not, then the two shapes shouldn't. Well, if we look at question 11, there is a prime example of one where that, not is, that is not the case. So just bear in mind that there, that is. So here you can see the center of rotation is clearly not touching the object, but the image and the object are touching at two corners. So it may be just a freak occurrence, but there is another one, I think it is. Oh. Uh, let's go here for question five again it's just a case that the shapes are touching so I do refrain and do apologize for any confusion caused by me making that somewhat false statement <laughs>